170 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of nowhere in Mexico, an endangered tarantula, a species discovered seven years ago and the rarest Brachypelma alive. All of this and more in this episode. So we stopped at another spot after finding Brachypelma smithy and now we found Bonetina. And it's not just another Bonetina species, it's Bonetina hymensi. We found the specimen in this barrel, right here. And this one is named after Eddie Hymensen, who has done multiple field trips within Mexico in search of Brachypelma bonetina, documenting all these different tarantulas here in Mexico and collaborated with Mexican researchers over the years. Easily 20 years, I think. So it's great to see that he got this honorable mention of naming a species after him. And since we know him for also almost 20 years, it's great to document his tarantula here in nature. Really amazing find. This species was named after Eddie Hymansen. He was part of the team that collected the type specimens in 2009, finding them on the stones in this exact kind of tropical deciduous forest. And here's what makes this find scientifically interesting. Ponetina Hymansi is sympatric with Brachypelma smithi, the famous Mexican red knee tarantula. Two completely different genera sharing the same habitat, hunting the same prey, sheltering under the same stones, evolution running parallel experiments in the same laboratory. And here's what makes it frustrating. In the European pet trade, this species has been circulating for years under a different name. A name that doesn't exist in any scientific publication. The trade identified it, marketed it, bred it and sold it. All before scientists had a chance to formally describe what it actually was. The commerce outran the taxonomy. But we didn't come all this way for Bonetina. We came for fire. Look closer at the patella, those knee segments, and you'll see the diagnostic feature. Distinct longitudinal stripes, more pronounced than any other Bonetina species. This is how you know you're looking at Bonetina hymenzeni. The first thing you notice is the carapace, covered in dense copper pubescence that catches the light like metallic powder. This isn't the bright orange of our fire-like tarantula we're looking for. It's darker, more subdued like a penny that's been sitting in soil. This is Mexican fire-like tarantula habitat and is way different, drier, more exposed. The tropical deciduous forest gives way to something harsher. Thorn scrub, open hillsides, the kind of terrain where shade is a luxury and the temperature way above 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. The cacti here aren't decorative, they're the dominant life form, part of trees. Everything else has either adapted to the brutal conditions or died trying. Brachypelma Böhmai was first described by German arachnologists Günther Schmidt and Peter Klaas in 1993. They named it after Klaus Böhme, who provided the specimens. For 30 years, the species has been bred in captivity around the world. But wild footage, wild behavioral data, almost non-existent. But science tells us where to look. The coastal region of the Sierra Madre del Sur range east of the Basel's river basin. Rocky hillsides, burrows without silk at the entrance. So we started searching. Day four, scorching heat. It's easily 40 degrees Celsius in the sun or 45. And uh, just about 20 kilometers off the coast, you can see there is absolutely no sign of rain. The vegetation changed completely. I'll show you later a more in-depth video of how this habitat looks. And in this area, we are searching for another Brachypelma species, Brachypelma Böhmai, 
and it's actually one of our favorite tarantula species of the genus Brachypelma, at least mine. And uh, together with our autumn, most definitely the target species of this trip. So it would be amazing if we find them. So wish us luck. It is about 1 p.m. I'll do some temperature measurements um, just to get an impression for you guys out there on how the climate actually is. But bear in mind, underneath rocks, within roots of trees and cacti, the temperature is not the same as on the surface. So do not yeah, think about taking these high temperatures for granted when you keep them as pet tarantulas in case. But we're not here to talk about pet tarantulas, we're here to talk about the magnificent tarantulas as a creature itself. They're just amazing animals. And yeah, we want to document them here in nature and find them. So, wish us luck. Prime Brachypelma my habitat. And guess what we've just found. And then there she was, a wild Prochipelma Böhmai, sitting at the entrance of a burrow in over 105 degree heat, in the only place on earth where her species exists in the wild. The color hits you first. That carapace isn't just orange, it's a warm, burnished copper that seems to glow against the dark substrate. But the legs, the legs are why they call this the fire leg. Look at the patella, the tibia, the metatarsi, completely reddish orange, every single segment. No knee bands like you'd see on Brachypelma homori, no isolated flame patterns like in Brachypelma auratum. The fire runs the entire length of the leg. It's what separates Bumai from every other red leg Brachypelma species at a glance. In captivity, keepers know that this color fades between molts. The orange dulls, the contrast softens, but here, fresh from a recent shed, under natural light, in natural habitat, this is what evolution actually selected for. This is the color that works in this environment. As we are tickling the spider out, she of course knows we are here, and these front legs are slightly raised, feeling the vibrations in the air and substrate. Tarantulas don't have ears. They feel sound through specialized hairs called trichobotria. Every footstep, every breath, every camera click, she's tracking all of it. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> An adult female, Brachypelma Böhmai, which is found here in this completely different habitat, just about 20, 25 kilometers from the coast. The habitat completely changed and so did also the Brachypelma species you can find. It's just remarkable. So you get the authentic so, so you get the authentic emotions here. Honestly, you can't really talk much about these tarantulas here in the field. They're so remarkable looking. Absolutely breathtaking and truly honored and blessed and privileged and to, to just find them here in, in nature. They're just so amazing, gentle giants with amazing colorations and yeah, happy to see that they thrive still in nature here. So we take some videos, take some pictures and then release her back into the burrow. So, how does a tarantula claim rodent holes? We don't know yet. There is only very limited natural history data about tarantulas. But of course, tarantulas like Brachypelma have urticating hairs, and those defensive bristles covering her abdomen, she can back into the burrow and kick clouds of irritating setae at the previous tenant until they abandon the space. Sounds like biological eviction? It kind of is, but 
there is no proof that this actually happens. It's most likely more for defense when a rodent or predator tries to enter and not the other way around where they're going to claim burrows that way. But it could be possible. Females like this one can live 25 to 30 years, maybe even longer. And she might have been here before this road was paved, before the power lines went up. She's witnessed decades of this landscape changing around her burrow while she stayed exactly where she is. Looking at the abdomen, black hairs scattered with long orange seta, like amber glowing in charcoal. The mating season runs from September to January, the transition from rainy to dry season. Males wander at night during cooler daylight hours on overcast days. They're following pheromone trails searching for burrow entrances that smell right. And when they find a female, they drum on the substrate with their pedipalps. And if she's receptive, she drums back. If she's not, well, males don't always survive rejection. And females will produce XX during the drier winter months. The spiderlings emerge about two months later and disperse in late spring, just before the rain starts. And then the cycle starts over. It takes years for spiders to mature, probably seven to nine years. And this female has probably been through that cycle, yeah, 15 times or even more. Now let's talk about conservation. And that's actually what keeps researchers up at night. Brachypelma boemai has the smallest geographic range of any Brachypelma species. The entire wild population exists in one municipality. According to field studies, Brachypelma boemai, along with Brachypelma bamgarteni and Brachypelma hamori, have very small zoogeographical ranges and are sensitive to habitat disruptions. These three species should not be considered for direct capture and export until more research has been conducted on their viability. To give you a little bit more impressions of the Brachypelma boemai habitat, which is completely different than the ones we find on the coast. You can see this amazing cacti, a uh, different species actually. There's another one over there I'll show you in a minute. And these trees here with these amazing root structures, you'll find them inside here. And yeah, it's just completely dry habitat. It's in the highlands actually. So it's not on the coastline, it's more up in the mountains, therefore possibly does not get that much rain and it shows. It's just a different landscape up here, very harsh landscape. So all the plants have thorns to protect themselves from any animals who want to eat them. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope you get some nice impressions. If you want to design an enclosure for your Brachypelma boemai species, truly breathtaking, exciting nature here. And uh, yeah, there's some nice possible enclosure designs you can do if you want to keep them as a pet tarantula, of course. And just as a point of reference, that's the surface temperature, 102 degrees, 39 degrees Celsius, 102 degrees Fahrenheit. So the sun is really scorching, but if you have a look underneath, for example, trees like this. Okay, the temperature is still right, very high. We need to find a different, different uh, rock, for example. Do you see this one? If we pull it out and have a measurement, it's still scorching hot. The trade continues nearly 10,000 specimens in a decade 
all documented as captive bred, no wild-caught individuals recorded. The legal framework in Mexico is actually sophisticated. The General Law of Wildlife established management units for the conservation of wildlife, called UMAs. These are registered breeding facilities operating under government oversight, and the first UMA, specifically for tarantulas, was established in 2002 to provide a legal source of Mexican tarantulas as an alternative to smuggling. The hobbyist community has evolved too. There's genuine stigma against owning wild-caught specimens. Keepers talk about ethical sourcing, breeders emphasize captive bred lineages. The consensus is clear. Captive bred is preferred, wild-caught is problematic. But here's the uncomfortable question. Does it really matter? If captive populations are thriving while wild populations are shrinking, why does wild matter? A Brachypelma Böhmai that's been bred in Germany or the United States for 50 generations is not the same animal as this one. The selective pressures are different, the diet is different, the temperature cycles, the humidity, everything is different. And wild populations are the reference, they're the genetic reservoir, they're the source code that captive breeding ultimately depends on. Lose the wild population and you lose access to the original blueprint. Whatever we have in captivity becomes the new baseline and there's no way to check our work. And that's why she's going back exactly where we found her. By tomorrow night she'll be back at the entrance, front legs extended over the threshold waiting for the vibrations that signal prey. A beetle, a cricket, maybe a small lizard whatever stumbles within striking distance. Same as she's done for decades, same as her mother did before her, same as this species has done in this exact spot for longer than humans have been recording history. We came to Guerrero looking for a tarantula, but we found two, one that science barely knows, described just seven years ago, still being studied, still revealing its secrets. If you keep Brachypelma Böhmai, you're keeping an endangered species. That's not a criticism. It's a responsibility. Breed them well, keep the captive lineages strong, appreciate what you have. <laughs> so, video and photo session is done, and now this adult female, Brachypelma Böhmai, we put her back into her burrow. After lunch we pushed further south, the habitat shifted again and within one hour of driving we were standing in front of another burrow, another species. Can you guess which one? <laughs> <laughs>